Next up, I would like to welcome our final speaker for today's event. She is a senior lecturer of management at our own institution, Bentley University, whose research focuses on women's leadership and remote work enabling. Her consulting niche is in entrepreneurial businesses that are coming of age and where people were just recently invited to the table to participate and collaborate. Today, she will share her idea of leadership, not likership. Please work, welcome Dr. Susan Roman. Thank you. That's so good. I started teaching leadership after years in corporate America. Now, out there, a performance review looks a little like this. You make some chit-chat, you get some praise, you get a raise, and then you part ways. It's simple. Well, let me tell you that teacher evaluations are nothing like that. I was honestly astounded by how much detail there is. There's charts, there's words. It's intimidating. If I forgot the fourth thing that I said the sixth week of class, I shouldn't worry because somebody wrote it down. That's how detailed it is. So just know that the first time I did a class and I got my teacher evaluations, I was massively relieved when my students said things like able to connect theory to practice and I had some aha moments. I was like, phew, thank God. But I will also tell you that inevitably the opposite happens eventually. And when that happened, I was devastated. Even if you get 100 positive evaluations, I will tell you, the words of somebody who is angry at you as a professor can really, really bite. And when that happens, I'm sad. I took that first negative evaluation straight to my supervisor, and I showed it to them. And I said, listen, I, I know I changed things up this time, but, and I know I'm tough, but I try to be fair, but, and my boss, they cut me off right then and there, and they said, Susan, I know you're a good teacher. It isn't easy for some students to receive feedback that they don't want to hear or grades that they didn't really like and then be neutral in the way that they evaluate you constructively. But you can't pander to your class and just give them inflated feedback or grades just so that they feel good and write you a good evaluation. For you to be a good teacher, you have to be okay with not everybody liking you. And to be totally honest with you, that took me a minute to register. But then when it did, it's like, OK. It sparked an idea in me. It sparked the idea that to lead my classes effectively, I was going to have to be OK with people not liking me. Now here's the interesting thing. This actually shouldn't have been that much of a surprise because when I'm not teaching, I do still consult. I consult on organizational effectiveness and leadership development and executive coaching. And people come to me when they are confused and they need somebody to help write their ship. In fact, recently, I had a client that came to me and something very similar was happening. He was the kind of guy who people loved to collaborate with and ideate with during the day. And by night, they'd go out for beers and have laughs at the bar. And he was given a plum role leading a high visibility team. And it was going so well until it didn't. The odd part was that he had friends on that team, friends who he thought would do right by him because they're friends. But they didn't. And in fact, when he tried to confront them on a missed deadline or something, they would wind up going out to a driving range and hitting some balls instead and laughing. Now, I can also tell you that I remember this particular client specifically because while I was working with him, I was also working with my writing partner, Dr. Tiffany Danko. She is a rear admiral in the United States Coast Guard Reserve, no stranger to adversity. And she and I were talking about this, and we agreed on a few points. There are people who we trust, and there are people who we do great work with, and people we have fun with. And it is awesome when that person is our boss. But when it comes to being in charge, it's called leadership, not likership. If you're doing your job, 
and this may go against the grain. You need to do what is right, not what will always be liked. You need to lead. So how do we do this? How do we lead in a way that's independent of being liked? Now, as someone who teaches emotional intelligence and empathy, believe me, this isn't easy to get my arms around either. But we don't need to turn into cold-hearted robots. What we do need to do is keep a few fundamentals in mind. And what I'd like to do today is offer to you four ideas, four suggestions so that we can lead for the whole, not for the likes. Now, the first idea that I have is simply that we need to have clear accountabilities and then we need to manage to them. People need to know what is and is not acceptable in terms of performance and professional behavior. Now think about this. You're driving down a road and you're speeding and you get caught and you get pulled over. You're not going to like it, but you can't say that you're surprised. You knew the rules, you knew the consequences, and you got caught. Oh, and by the way, all the other cars that saw you speeding, they're looking behind in their rearview mirror and they're laughing or smiling. Now, it's not, it's not because they want to be mean. It's because you all knew the rules and you all knew the consequences and they were reassured that the police officer did their job. Most employee engagement surveys are going to tell you that to be successful, people need to know what's expected of them and also what happens if they stray from these expectations. For my client, this meant not looking the other way when his friends didn't do their jobs. So hold your team accountable for doing what they're supposed to do and everyone will feel more comfortable knowing that they can trust you as their leader to do the right thing. Now the second idea that I have goes right along with the first because holding somebody accountable is not just a simple transaction. When you're the leader, you need to be the one that holds the difficult conversations. If a client is upset or a deadline is missed, you the leader are the one that has to address the situation. Now you may be tempted not to make waves. I mean, maybe you've had a friend send you a text message or an email that subtly tells you what they didn't like. But don't people deserve better than that? Don't they deserve for you to look them in the eye when you tell them what's going on? Don't they deserve the opportunity to ask you questions and then offer their side of the story? Just like any other relationship, the one between a leader and followers, it requires communication. Communication is vital. People need to know what happened, why it matters, and what you expect them to do in order to fix the situation. Having those tough conversations, it signals that you accept the challenges of leadership and together you'll fix things. Now, the third bit of advice I have is not as sexy as the other leadership stuff that I usually talk about, but it actually may be the most valuable. When you are the leader, you need to get comfortable delegating the dirty work. Now, think about this. You're on your way to a business meeting and you pass a dam. And yes, it may sound strange because I don't pass dams often on my way around here, but pretend with me. So anyway, the dam springs a leak. You could be the one to fix that leak. But what happens when there's another and another and another? Eventually, you're going to run out of fingers and toes. And also, you're not going to be able to walk away to do your real job. Your real job as a leader is to answer questions and to vet out ideas and to remove obstacles and to develop talent. If you're making cold calls or deduplicating data, you're not going to have the time or energy necessary to do these things. You get to say now, hmm, I know that I'm not supposed to delegate the work that I wouldn't do myself. But you also get to say, but now is the not the right time for me to do it. You have worked hard. You did the dirty work. And now you're the leader, so you get to own it. And oh, by the way, also give other people the opportunity to do that work and shine so they can become leaders too. Instead of trying to be the nice guy and working twice as hard to do it all, show them that you are comfortable leading now. My fourth bit of advice, it should be something intuitive. When you are the leader, see things through. Now this should be intuitive because there's no way you're going to be a leader if you decide to give up on a job halfway through. But what happens when you're asked to lead a change? When you're asked to make change happen, you will likely be met with resistance. There's an old adage that says, you cannot make an omelet without cracking some eggs. And when you are going to lead change, you are going to cause disruption. 
whether you're going to do something where the process may not be liked or the outcome, who knows? But managing change is about taking the lead to see things through to the end, to achieve the goal. Now think about this. Instead of acquiescing to the popular views, Galileo posited that the Earth rotated around the sun. Now where would we be if he gave up halfway through? What if the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King said, civil rights, this is too hard, I'm giving up? Or Jacinda Ardern, she's like, no, I'm having a confidence wobble, I don't think I should really take this country through COVID. No, these people, these, are, these people understood as leaders that what their job was, was to do what they needed to do for the sake of the cause, not for the goal of being liked. So if you start leading a change, remember this, all eyes are going to be on you. You can't waver if you want people to feel like things are going to be okay. While some people, while some people may not like what's going to happen, the artful leader is going to do their homework, create a plan, and see it through. Remember, once those eggs are cracked, you have to do something with them. So ideally, you're going to do something great. Now, there's a lot more to being a great leader. I mean, I teach semesters of this stuff. But today, if you can take with you one bit, it's to try to remember that it's great to be liked, but your team needs you to lead. Thank you.